Hello students. Today we're going to talk about how to reconcile a bank statement. Um, most of you probably have a checking account and if you're like me you check your balance online on a regular basis. Um, in fact I even pay a lot of the uh, things that I pay out of my checking account online so I don't write as many checks as I used to. Uh, however, it's still very important to balance your um, checking account with your records against the bank's records to make sure that there are no differences, especially important uh, if you are a company because a company would, of course, be writing more checks. Uh, in order to reconcile a bank statement, what we're going to do is look at what we have on our accounting records and we're also going to look at the bank statement and we're going to compare the amounts that are going through both of those to see what the differences are. And those differences are going to be uh, the reconciling items. There may be some reconciling items, items that we have uh, in the accounting records that the bank has not yet recorded. There may be some items that the bank has recorded that we have not yet recorded on our accounting records. So the purpose of the reconciliation is to come up with an adjusted balance on both sides which is the same. So that's what we're going to talk about today. And in order to uh, illustrate this, I'm going to uh, take a look at exercise 818 in your textbook. Uh, I've already put the format of the reconciliation up here so that um, we can have a starting point um, to uh, begin this exercise. So let's look at the data in the exercise. Okay. Uh, the very first thing that uh, the exercise says is the cash balance according to the company's records at August the 31st is $31,080. So I'm going to put that over here, cash per company's records, $31,080. i also put that down here in the uh, T account, which, um, which, which represents the general ledger account. Okay, the next thing, uh, cash balance according to the bank statement on August the 31st is 38280 So I will put that here, balance, uh, cash balance or cash per bank statement. The next item is checks outstanding. Now you may have written some checks that have already been recorded on your books here, but they have not yet come to the bank and they have not cleared the bank. So therefore, when they do clear the bank, they will, will be deducted from this balance, so we need to, de to deduct them here. So checks outstanding is 12460 Okay. The next item is a deposit in transit not recorded by the bank. Now that deposit you would have already recorded in your check register and on your accounting records. Uh, but it has not yet been recorded on the bank. You may have made it uh, in the afternoon or on Friday afternoon and it won't be recorded until the next day. Uh, so therefore we need to put that deposit in transit. When it does uh, clear the bank it will be added to the bank balance. Uh, so the deposit in transit will be added 5850 and we put it here. Okay. All right, the next thing we see is a check for $180. The check was written for $180 in payment of an account payable, but it was erroneously recorded in the check register as 810. Now, we learned in an earlier chapter that that is a transposition. You simply transpose the numbers. You wrote the check correctly, which means that the bank will pay it correctly. But on the accounting records, you wrote it for 810 when it should have been 180. Therefore, you deducted more than you should have on the accounting records. And we have to add back the difference. With these errors, when we find an error, you have to read it very carefully to determine whether or not it's going to be added or subtracted because it could go either way. In fact, the bank might also make an error, so you need to make sure that there are no errors on the bank statement as well. Okay, so we know that the uh, amount of the check was 180, the amount we recorded was 810, the difference is 630, we need to add that back to the uh, balance per the company or the accounting records. So we add 630 there. Okay, the last item in this exercise is a bank debit memo for service charges of $40. Now the bank would all have already deducted that from the bank statement, but we have not yet deducted it from the accounting records, 
So we need to subtract the $40 from our balance per the accounting records. Okay? Now keep in mind when you get the bank statement and it has credits and debits, the credits on the bank statement are increases in the account and the debits are decreases. Now I know this sounds different from what you do on the accounting records, but uh, as we talked about in an earlier chapter, the reason that the bank credits your account as an increase, debits your account as a decrease, is because your account on their records is a liability, therefore the entries are just the opposite of what you would do. So you have to keep that in mind. Um, by now though you should know that uh, since we're in a later chapter. Okay, all right, let's look at the reconciliation now and uh, put in the subtotals and the totals. Uh, we want to add together the beginning cash balance uh, plus the deposits and transit or any other items that we might need to add. We don't have any on this particular one, but we could have. Uh, and the subtotal is 44130 Okay. Then we have all the items that we're going to deduct. The only one we have here is outstanding checks. However, there could be other items as well. The bank could have made a mistake, and we need to account for that on the reconciliation. So we're going to subtract the outstanding checks from the subtotal which would give us an adjusted balance per bank of $31,670. Okay, so that's what we have adjusted per bank. Now let's go over to the uh, company side and let's add the beginning cash plus the error that we're going to add in. There may be other things. Sometimes the uh, bank will collect uh, notes receivable or in, with, along with interest and you would have to record that uh, on the reconciliation as an increase because you would not have known about it prior to getting the bank statement therefore you would have not recorded it in the accounting records so that's just another example of what you might have to add right now we only have this error so let's add those two the subtotal is uh, 31,017 from that, we're going to subtract all of the things that we need to deduct. There may be other things, as I mentioned, but this is the only thing we have right now. So if we subtract that, we're going to get an adjusted balance per the accounting records of 31670 Now, it is important when you get to this point that these two numbers are the same, which we see here that they are. If they are the same, your reconciliation is in balance and then you can move forward. However, if they are not, you need to go back through your checkbook uh, and back through the bank statement to determine what the differences are. Okay? Alright, now once you get to this point, you need to decide what needs to be done um, with the information that you've collected. Now, if all you have on the uh, bank side of the reconciliation uh, is deposits and transits and outstanding checks, then you really don't have to do anything because these are timing differences and they will come on through the bank uh, in a reasonable amount of time. You need to check your bank statement the next month just to make sure that they have cleared. Uh, but they will uh, come through if they are simply timing differences. So you don't have to do anything here. However, if you did have uh, a reconciling item that was actually an error on the bank, you need to go to the bank and get that straightened out and get the bank to correct that for you. However, on the other side, um, the company side of the reconciliation, we do have some things that we need to do because we have some things here that have not been recorded. Therefore, we do need to make journal entries for all of the reconciling items on this side of the reconciliation. We normally would make two journal entries, one to show the increases in uh, the balance and one to show the decreases. So we're going to do that. The first one, we will debit cash. Of course, that is an increase. And uh, let me come down a little bit because I think I have my debit credit down a little further. So we'll just go down just a little bit here. We'll debit cash. And what are we going to be crediting? Well, that was an error in recording a payment, so we're going to credit accounts payable. Okay, and that amount was 630, 630 debit, 630 
credit. All right? Then we're going to make an entry to record all the amounts that were de deducted, and that would be a credit to cash. What are we going to debit? Well, we look at what we have, and we have bank service charge. We can debit an account called bank service charge expense. However, in this exercise, they use miscellaneous expense, which is fine. That will be a debit to miscellaneous expense and a credit to cash for $40. Okay, now it's not uh, enough just to make the journal entry, you've got to post the journal entry. So let's go over to our T account, which is representing our general ledger account, and let's post these two amounts. We're going to debit. The cash account for three, uh, 630, we're going to credit the cash account for 40. Okay, now when you uh, come up with your balance in your general ledger, we're going to do it here in a T account. Your adjusted balance then should be 31,670. So that is the balance that you have in your general ledger after you make the adjustments. It will also be the amount that you will add to your balance sheet, that will be the cash balance on the balance sheet. Um, I will continue talking about this chapter in the next video, uh, talking about some of the special uh, types of uh, uh, fund accounts or um, petty cash and special uh, fund accounts. Uh, if you have any questions on the reconciliations or anything else in the chapter, just let me know. Thank you.